Welcome to the fourth video in the series of basic electrical. In this video, we're going to talk about relays and contactors. And again, if you have not watched the basic electrical videos one through three on my channel, please go and do so before you get into this one. These videos do build upon each other, and it's sort of important to watch them in order. So a relay is an electrical device. It consists of a coil and a set of contacts. The coil and the contacts are isolated or protected from each other. It is designed to be usable where one circuit must control another. The relay coil is a spool of wire that is wrapped around an iron core. When the wires energized, that means electri electricity or electrical current is applied to it, there's a magnetic field generated. This field pulls in an armature that opens or closes a set of contacts. When a relay is shown on a schematic, it is always shown in the de-energized mode or position. Again, when we write schematics, especially ladder diagrams, we show everything de-energized. The relay coil has a voltage rating. This rating is the voltage that you may apply to the coil. In HVAC, these ratings are normally 24, 120, 208-230 volts. You cannot apply 120 volts to a 24 volt coil, and you can't apply 24 volts to a 120 volt coil. Bad things happen. You let the smoke out of things. The coil rating is normally stamped on the side of the relay. The coil is a load in a schematic circuit. So the, the relay contacts are a switch. The relay coil is a load. The contacts are the switching devices of the relay. When the contacts are in a schematic, they're treated as an open or closed switch. Relay contacts come in two varieties, normally open, normally closed. Relay contacts are attached to the armature that is moved by the magnetic force of the coil. The relay contacts have metal points that come in contact with each other. These points complete the circuit. Normally open contacts are the equivalent of an open switch. When the relay coil is de-energized, it's an open in the circuit. When the relay coil is energized, they close, just like turning on the light switch. When the coil is de-energized, they open again. Normally open. When the coil is de-energized, the contacts are open. Normally closed contacts are the exact opposite. They're closed when the coil is de-energized. So in other words, the light switch is turned on when the coil is de-energized. When the coil is energized, the switch opens and stops current from reaching the load. When the coil is de-energized again, the contacts close again. The contacts are rated with the number of amps they can control. In other words, how much current you can send through it. The contacts also are rated with the type of load they could control. This would either be an inductive load, like a motor, or a resistive load, like a heater. If it has a coil and produces magnetism, it's considered inductive. If it's just a plain piece of wire or metal that heats up, it's considered resistive. With inductive loads, the amperage spikes when it's first starting. With resistive loads, the amperage remains constant. Make sure the contact ratings exceed the maximum amperage that the load is rated for. Again, make sure the contact ratings exceed the maximum amperage the load is rated for. One size does not fit all as long as it's, unless it's larger than the maximum amperage is on everything you're trying to use it for. Every component has a sequence of operation. A good service technician can always describe the operation of a circuit to somebody over the phone by giving a sequence of operation. When the relay is de-energized, there's no power across the coil. The contacts between points 1 and 3 are normally open, and I'll show you a diagram in a minute. The contacts between points 1 and 2 are normally closed. The relay coil is energized with 24 volts. This closes the contacts between 1 and 3 and opens the contacts between 1 and 2. So again, 
symbols of a relay. We have a relay coil here. We have the normally open contact and the normally closed contact. Remember, the relay is designed to control loads in the same circuit or another circuit. So here we have a relay, example one, okay? We have a switch down here, our relay coil, let me get the pen here. Our relay coil is here. The C1 with the slash is normally closed. C1 by itself is normally open. These are your symbols. So in this example, switch one is open and the coil C1 is not energized. Thus the normally open contact C1 is open and the green load is not energized. The normally closed contact C1 is closed and the red load is energized. So going back here again, C1 coil, not energized because of the open switch. C1 normally closed is allowing current to, bulb, to the red bulb. C1 normally open is blocking current from the green bulb. Now, we close the switch. See down here, we now have closed the switch. C1 coil is now energized. What it did was close the normally open, the top one now it has a slash so it's closed, and it opened the bottom one. So our red bulb is de-energized and our green bulb is energized. Switch one has been closed. This has energized the relay coil C1. When the coil was energized, the normally closed contact C1 was opened and it de-energized the red bulb. The normally open contact C1 is closed and this energized the green bulb. Okay, the Mars relay is one of the most frequent relays you'll see. It consists of two of a coil and two sets of isolated contacts. Each set has a commonly op common normally open and normally closed contact. And we're missing a picture here. Okay, but basically you have a normally closed, normally open, and I'm going to draw this off to the side here. Okay, we have our normally open. We have our normally closed. Okay. And then we have that same thing repeated right under it. We come back across. Okay. So we have pin one, two, actually, that's three two, four, five, six, and then we have two pins for the coil. Those two pins are never labeled. One and four is considered my common, three and six is my normally open, two and five is my normally closed. Okay, so the schematic that we're looking at here, what I'm trying to show, is pins 1, 3, 2, 4, 6, and 5, and my coil. Contactors are really close in operation to the relays. A contactor has one or two sets of contacts that are normally open. Contactors are designed to be switching devices for loads with high amperages. Most contactors use control voltage to control high voltage loads. So we use low voltage controls that control high voltage loads. Contactor coils are rated by voltage. Contactor contacts are rated by amperage. Sound familiar? It's the same as the relay. These ratings are normally written on the side of the contactor. Do not install a contactor that goes over either of these ratings. Okay, contactor schematic symbols you have your normally open and your coil. 
Troubleshooting contactors and relays is a matter of looking at voltage across load and switches. In the following example, B2 is not working when SW1 is turned on. Let's take a look. Okay, so B2 is here. It's not working when we turn SW1 on. So what is supposed to happen? If I close SW1, we energize C1. We close that one, the normally open. We open the normally closed. We energize the coil of C2, which should close C2 normally open contacts. Okay, that's what should happen. Now, we have to find out what's happening because you can't see these open and closed contacts. So we first want to make sure we actually have power. We have power. We read 120. Starting at the zero volt mark, or starting at line, we go to the switch. By the zero across the switch, we know that that switch is closed. We go keep going. We have voltage across a load. So we know this load is energized or open. Okay, I know that that load is open. I come here, I have zero volts there, tells me my wiring's good. I have zero volts here, that tells me that that is closed, so we know this coil is actually good. I have zero volts there, so we know that that's closed and this wiring is good. I have 120 volts here. Well, we know that this load has power to it now. Voltage across an energized or bad load is source. Okay, come to here. I have voltage, I have zero volts there. It tells me that wire is good. That tells me that the switch is closed. Zero volts across an open a switch tells me the switch is closed. Zero volts there. Now, wait a sec. I should have had voltage across an, a load, okay, should be what? Source, right? If we know that that's closed, I should have had source voltage in this position. But yet, I do have source here. Well, we, have a, we know what our issue is. This contact, okay, this contactor controlled by C2 is bad because the contacts are not closing. Based on the last two measurements, the technician would determine that the contactor C2 has a bad contact. The voltage across a load should not be zero. The voltage across a closed switch or contact should not be source. Okay, for those of you that are in a shop environment, you now have two shop projects to do that use relays and contactors. Make sure you understand this material and get an instructor to sign off. If you're doing this online, Please take a look at the video comments or the comments on my vid website. I will give you um, a practice project on this on a simulator environment. A couple additional pictures I want to show you on this video as well. Um, this is an image of a double pole contactor. Okay, so what, it, what happens here is these um, contactors basically work in tracks from top to bottom. So on the top terminals on the left and right side, you would attach like L1 and L2. On the bottom terminals would be your output. On each side is where your um, control voltage connects. There's tabs there. There's a, there's a um, block in the middle of plastic that prevents um, voltage from arcing from one side to the other. When the contactor energizes, the coil, which is at the bottom, pulls down on the two tabs seen in the middle. So that's a contactor example. A relay looks a little bit different. Again, we have our pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then on this one, I have four pins for the coil. You have your, you have your control voltage in, your common coming out. Underneath it is your um, coil itself. 
you cannot see the operation of the points inside the relay like you can do in your contactor. So you definitely have to use a meter on the relay to see if things are actually working properly. On the side of the relay, just like on the side of the contactor, you have all your voltages and um, amperages stamped there so that you know you're installing it in the right circuit.